My name is Matt Peterson. We are row crop farmers on 30 inch rows. We raise corn and soybeans. So I think the reason we started looking into both the CTIS and also the VF tires was we were kind of at a crossroads between either switching to a different tractor or reinvesting in our current tractor. So as far as traction and horsepower goes, we both chipped the tractor and therefore we needed a little bit extra traction. We were already having slippage issues. So we looked into the VF tires and then that led us down the path of looking into CTIS. The CTIS system, we've had that installed for about two seasons now. Um, this past fall, we couldn't run it because we had other down issues, so we actually had a lease tractor. And one of the things I noticed right away with that one, that one was equipped with the hydro cushion front axle, and I immediately missed our CTIS system because I believe our tractor still rode better than that system with the tires deflated some within reason, and that system active, I still miss the ride quality of our tractor with the air system on it. So after the installation, we ran it through the fall and as fall went on, we started to have a little bit of issues with the valves closing. NTS and PTG, they came out and spent a good day and a half here the winter afterward troubleshooting. And eventually what it came down to was the rotary union on the axle was an older version. So they had actually released a newer version that fixed that issue. So since then we've had one spring season with the updated hardware on it and it seemed to perform well. We didn't have any degrading performance or anything like we did at the end of that fall season that we had issues. Of the advantages that I've noticed with the CTAS system, it's hard to pick out one favorite one. Um, as an operator in the cab for hours, ride quality is obviously a, a nice benefit that I didn't really expect. Um, the performance and the traction is obviously what we were after, and I believe we've accomplished that. The other benefit is with some of the equipment moving to a very heavy tongue when in the transport position, going down the road, just being able to pump up the tires and having that additional stability and eliminating the road lope makes a really big difference. So just less stress, nicer on the operator on my back, and then obviously the infield performance is what we were after and what we, what we got out of it. On the inflate side, usually the last pass before I exit the field, I'll maybe start the system as long as it's not in major dust. Otherwise, while it's inflating, the implements folding up and I'm getting out and kind of walking around and just checking things over. So it's a good time to get out of the cab as long as you're not under anything. And to just look stuff over. Deflate time, again, it's half mile before you get to the field, I start deflating usually. And by the time I get the monitor set up for what I'm doing, get situated in the field, I'm close, close enough to pressure that it's, it's, I'm comfortable starting at that point. So this is the air valve that controls the flow of the air in and out of the tires. Um, it kind of works like a check valve. So if the system were to fail, you're not going to be losing any air out of the tires. And that's on every single tires, whereas some systems are hooked together. And if you were to have a line go, you might lose it. Um, this is completely automatic. It's all controlled from the cab. There's no hooking up hoses or anything like that. We do not have the external lines. Um, we opted to go with the RDS unit, I think is the acronym, that's on the axle itself with the duels and just not wanting the, the leverage of an arm sticking out or just something else that we have to contend with about not hooking it or parking it into a, a tight shed space. And it's just a, a cleaner appearance, which appealed to us. So the air compressor is all integrated into the tractor's hydraulics. That's where it gets its power from. And then we opted to go with the ISO bus option to control the tire system as this tractor, while it's a little bit older and doesn't have an integrated monitor for what we're using it for, it will always have a monitor in it anyway. So just one less thing to have in the cab. The ISO bus is fairly straightforward. I can increase the front or the back individually to eliminate either that road lope or power hop in the field. And with the different implements, some implements have little to no tongue weight. And with a lot of the more European style front fold equipment, all of a sudden you've got a lot of tongue weight going down the road and it's nice to be able to adjust and accommodate whatever's behind you and not have to pre-plan 
or inflate at the shop before you leave just to, to handle it on the road when really that's not the conditions you'd want in the field. So in regard to the CTIS, I think my friends in the ag industry are probably tired of me talking about it because I'm just that convinced. Tracks have their place. We've never been a big proponent of tracks. You still have hard rollers beneath the rubber. You can pick out where the track tracks have been in the spring. So the CTIS system with the VF tires has, has it's been a good compromise between the two. Not seeing that track compaction while still having that increased footprint, lower tire pressure, lower ground pressure, um, just traction without uh, the overhead of tracks, I suppose you could phrase it.